We are at the very last talk of the day. So only Seb, Stefano Siper, uh, left us apart from the beer. So <laughs> you have a big duty. Uh, so the, who is the next speaker? Uh, PhD in uh, computational chemistry or something like this. Experience in data science and MLOps. Uh, now MLOps engineer in Synthesia or Scientist, you know, whatever. Please welcome Stefano Bosisio. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much, Marco. Um, wow, so nice you hit all the points. Um, Podcast host and podcast uh, maker as well. But Thank this you. is another advertisement after the talk. So, yes, I'm Stefano. And finally, uh, I'm the last speaker for today. I know I have this uh, problem here. Uh, as the last speaker is 5 o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. So, no worries. I revised my entire slides when I found out I was the last one. So, they will be at least more interactive, less stressful, I hope. I don't know. I don't know. Bear with me. Um, uh, and just before starting, uh, yeah, today I will be talking with you about this technology called Apache Beam. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's tutorial-like, there will be some codes, but yeah, it doesn't really change. Um, actually, my talk will be, would like to sparkle some ideas. Uh, all those of you that are working for startups or have some ideas in mind might find useful this talk. Uh, I'd like to, I don't know, have clear discussions about possible projects and uh, how to use Apache Beam as a possible tool to close up all your data problem as well as MLOps problem. Um, and so let me see if I can use it. No, the other one, yeah, of course. Um, so what we're talking today, obviously, uh, data ops, MLOps and what Apache Beam. Uh, how to use Apache Beam on steroids, which is uh, either Google Dataflow or WS Kinesis. There's also the Azure counterpart, but I can't remember the name, so you, you can look for it. Uh, and then we'll jump to the technical side of the talk. So there will be uh, how Apache Beam works in practice, how is a, an Apache Beam pipeline, uh, how to do data processing in Beam. And, and since everyone is talking about these LLMs, Yes, I'll be talking about LLMs and possible model deployment strategies with Apache Beam. Um, so let's start with it. Um, there's a big caveat in this talk. Um, on Thursday night, I submitted the talk, I sent it to Tao, and obviously Tao said, uh, you know, if you want some internet access, it might be very stressful to us, to the IT people, of course. So the idea was to ask you to connect on Menti, but no worries, we can ask this question in real time. And actually, I already asked this question to another audience. So let's suppose that you have a startup, a project in your mind, and you want to start this new project. In terms of data ops, what would you like to have from a data ops tool? Uh, you can see, well, you can see someone very cheerful who wrote open F source, yeah, uh, all right. But I don't know, what, what would you like to have from a data ops tool? What's the big? It works in production. Works in production, yeah, that's very important. Uh, I don't know, many, m many people say, yeah, production, easy to go to production as well. Cost is implication. Uh, they can be easy of usage, and as well as something that data ops is really uh, lacking of is a good way to have a complete data lineage or data tracking, right? We're creating data, but where does data come from? I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't have the tool for it. Um, uh, and as well, always the same scenario. You have a startup or you have a project. Uh, it might be a billion-dollar project that you have in your mind and you want to uh, make it. What are your considerations about MLOps tools? So, I don't know, any, any biggest wish from an MLOps tool? What, what, what would you pick up and why? And what are your considerations? It works really well in production. <laughs> 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 that's that's true. Easy APIs. Easy APIs, yeah. The easy pipeline development here. Ah, yes, of course. So, they could be easy. Uh, it could go to production without too much hassle. Um, it can also lower down the work made by ML engineers, of course, because I don't want to stress ML engineer in my team just to push something to production. I, all these considerations are great, and I think they're uh, a good fit for my talk because um, let's suppose now, um, let's put this into practice. I, I thought of a case like I have a startup and I want to evaluate different tools for data ops and ML ops. So we can make under our assumptions, we can this would be a multidimensional plot, of course, but I just picked two dimensions. One is 
how this tool is data and ML ops efficient. And on the x-axis, uh, the thing I will go for is how easy to use, but you can say, oh, the cost and so on. And so I start to uh, draft down some tools. So uh, Duxter, by the way, uh, anyone use Duxter? Oh, breaks my heart. Uh, there are some well-known PySpark, Airflow also present, Kubeflow, uh, there's uh, Mark over there, that's, uh, Kubeflow lover, so that's nice. Uh, so uh, the position of these tools is not actually a random, uh, it's, all, um, it's all a merit of the data ops and MLOps efficiency as well as the ease of use. So I started with DAX uh, that I find is an excellent data ops tool, give it a chance, next time I talk about DAX, uh, but the engineering effort to make it to production is uh, a, a huge, really, um, it takes a lot of time to create an easy template that you can send to your search engineers as well as data scientists so they can start working on it. Uh, all these tools are great. Airflow, I know everyone knows Airflow, right? You have used Airflow in your life. You can say, you can pretend to say yes. <laughs> okay, so Airflow, amazing tool. Uh, all the companies uh, have Airflow because it's so light. The problem is this, maybe it's too light. Uh, when we go to production, you must have good engineers to take care of the cluster, otherwise, as it happened to me, the cluster is basically blowing up and you can't recover all the data processing you were dealing with. Uh, the last point is Kubeflow, is something I really love, and, and in my opinion, it's very easy to use, really. Uh, it's no-brainer, because you just need to use two decorators, pipeline and component, write in Python, and the job is done. And I think it's actually excellent for training, it's excellent for data processing, maybe not so good for going to deployment. So once you train the model, there are some obviously nice tricks that you can use to deploy the model. Kubeflow maybe is not the best, but still, we're there. And here I would locate as well Apache Beam. So ease of usage, and it could be a good combo with Kubeflow because it could have a great data ops, as well as a great model deployment solution. So we go. Uh, here we go. So what's Apache Beam? Uh, Apache Beam is an open source tool. So open source uh, just means that you can uh, freely browse on their GitHub repo. You can contribute to the repo. You can also fix these CI errors they had, which was uh, at the time of the snapshot was a bit. Say, oh, well, I hope nobody will notice, but that's right. Happened. Um, it's a unified programming model. So what does it mean is that in many companies, we are browsing from, I don't know, Python to Scala to C++ maybe. Apache Beam say, you know what? I give you either Java or Python. You pick up one of those, you write your pipeline, and that pipeline that you wrote is enough to go from dev to production. No, de no need for additional engineers to modify it. You're free, ready to go. And it allows you to do um, batch streaming data processing. What it means is batch is a big single job of uh, data processing. While streaming, you can ingest data in real time, do some data processing in real time, inference in real time. And what is good, in my opinion, if I were a, a startup, is that I can pass from Python directly to the business value, the results. Many times we're struggling in giving a value to our data, so maybe, this is a very simple prototypization of a code, uh, a prototyping of an idea, and we can jump immediately to the results. So uh, this slide could be a take-home message for you about Apache Beam and why I consider it as a, a valuable solution to consider for all the projects that we have in our minds, beautiful minds, as a powerful abstraction. There's no level details in the code. You don't have to care about CUDA or, I don't know, Scala itself. Why? It's so painful. Uh, it's a unified programming model. So as I said, either Java or Python, no ML engineer in between. Of course, there will be an ML engineer. I need my job, but uh, at least no immediate problem if you are alone in your company and you want to do something really valuable. And flexibility, that's something always uh, missing in many tools. I would like to create a code, a simple code, a template that could give it to you and you can start working on it. You can modify, you can use copier, you can use cookie cutter and have it done on your uh, repo, and you can start working on it. Now, uh, 
we can even go even further and put Apache BIM on steroids. Now, I'm in love with GCP by not sponsoring any GCP product, but Google Dataflow uh, uh, made something to me. Well, it's the same as uh, AWS Kinesis Analytics. Um, so Apache BIM can easily run on this GCP service, which is called Dataflow. Uh, Dataflow, as you can see, sits right in the middle of your data. So on the right side, you have all your data sources, so it can be a table, it can be a published uh, subscription system. And data uh, beam, sorry, with Dataflow, process all your input data and give you immediately value that can be going to the custom sync. Now, um, the good thing is obviously is a serverless technology, so you don't have to worry about Kubernetes and all these uh, tricky things. Don't worry about nodes. Scalable. It does the scaling. You can control, actually, the scalability of Dataflow as well. And fully integrated, not only with GCP, but from my experience with any kind of API or tool you have in mind, it's very easy to make it work with anything. So it's a very great, uh, a great product. And what I like most in Dataflow, guys, I, there we go, a pipeline graph. Finally, someone can show me a pipeline graph. So uh, you pass from the code to direct visualization of your code. This is how a beam pipeline looks like in Apache, uh, sorry, in Dataflow. And you can have also a lot of specifications, a lot of metrics. Not only you can pick up a single component, a single component will have uh, some specific metrics. For example, here, the number of elements processed by second, uh, per second, and as well as the number of uh, output that we have per second. Or you can even go into the nitty gritty details. You can have the CPU utilization, the memory utilization, you can have code information. Uh, so as you can see, we already have a monitory system in place without actually creating a monitory system. Many times I had to deal with Grafana dashboards or tricky alerting systems. They say, hey, 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 Stefan, you're spending so much money. No, not this time, finally, it's all done. That's fantastic, isn't it? So, um, and this could be even a way to easily deploy a pipeline using uh, Dataflow. So uh, what usually happens is that you write your pipeline in Python or Java, if you, but we're talking about Python, so today is Python and tomorrow will be Java. Um, there's obviously a CI CD process in between. You need uh, an image to be created, but Dataflow can easily pick it up, spin up uh, an instance for you, job done. I got immediate value about uh, directly from my input data. Now, yes, this is the end of the light part of the talk. Now we'll jump into the technical side. Uh, hold on, the beer is there, it's almost there. So can we see how is an Apache Beam pipeline in reality, please? Yes, of course we can. So here, a little bit of code, uh, but just to show you how it's easy to code up in Apache Beam. Uh, Python wise. So of course, the first element we'll need is, guess what? Import Apache Beam. So import Apache Beam as Beam, as well as some additional imports that can be some input output functions and what we call pipeline options. Pipeline options are like, if you're running on cloud, they can specify the region you're running on, or uh, if you're running on CUDA or uh, CPU or on specific machines you want to use. And then, we'll need an interface function to have our pipeline. So a simple run function that has some um, input arguments are going in. Um, of course, if we have some input arguments, we will need a parser. So you can choose the parser that you want. Here there's arc parse. You like not, you like yes. All right, no problem. You can choose whatever you want. Parse the input arguments. Otherwise, the pipeline is pretty useless. Um, and you can set up the pipeline option for uh, your current pipeline. And then what we have finally here is, ladies and gentlemen, the pipeline in Beam. So how does it work? Uh, simple elements. The first one is a context manager which opens up the pipeline object. And then we have all the pipeline step. As you can see, it's pretty interesting to see how the pipeline is written because you have the pipeline object P, a pipe, the name of the pipeline like read, and then the function that the component is actually running. Um, some components are pre-compiled, pre-baked in Apache Beam. Some others instead are uh, created through this uh, beam.pardo and following a function. So the function in the pardo will be called a do function. 
And now, I think this morning Andrea talked about this. We made a step back of about 30 years, and we're back to Fortran to exactly understand what's going on under the hoods of Apache Beam. Uh, so I said, this is the pipeline object, and here we have the steps or transforms, as it's called in Apache Beam. So that par do is, okay, forgive me, but it comes straight from Fortran. So what happens is, suppose you have a, an input of documents, like thousands of thousands of thousands of documents. What Apache Beam does is actually to automatically split them into patches, uh, shuffle them, ready to be parallelizable without you to know how to parallelize an object. So you don't have to care about how to parallelize my, my components. And this is what the par do or parallel do is doing. And this was what Fortran was doing in the 70s with par do. So all these patches automatically are sent towards your do function. So in the do function, there will be some operation. You're, I don't know, maybe computing some very cool data scientist features like the the logarithm of the imaginary frequency of something, and then automatically this will be out within two batches. The good thing of Apache Beam is that you don't have also to be worried how to collect these results. Apache Beam will return an object called pcollections. The pcollection can be a pcollection of strings, can be a pcollection of some custom object you've created, will match them for you, and this object will be either going to your output or to the next step of your pipeline. So Fortran is back, and the optimization and the parallelization they put is amazing. So it's really, really on point. Uh, now, can we see some BIM in action, please? Of course, we can. It's Saturday, half past five, whatever. Osmo Easter time, so why not? Uh, I thought of dividing two parts. The first one is a data ops one, and I thought of a case. So imagine we have a website, a fantastic website, uh, well, we have a lot of users, million users every day. Um, like it'd be fashionable point to it, actually. So, but no, you can copy this idea. Um, what we have, of course, on our website would be two type of users. We'd be scammers and, and normal people like me. So scammers usually are using specific browsers. Uh, they tend to have different IP. They use proxies. There's IP rotation. It's a good way. They use a VPN. And also, special, they might have some login pattern to overcome your simple rules to avoid scammers to get on my website. Uh, differently from standard people, which, I mean, standard people might use Safari, Chrome, got no VPN because it costs money, uh, or, or you have a subscription with no VPN, but uh, there's no advertisement here on YouTube. And also as a simple browsing, right? So if you think of these inputs, actually, these are all action, all events from our user, and we can record all these events in our website, and we can process them as a streaming process in our Beam pipeline, and finding a way to detect scammers and spammers as well on our, on our website. In particular here, interactive moment, what would you think of as a good tactic to find who's a scammer on my, our website? So something, I don't know. What would you look for? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, well. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know, like, uh, yeah, graph. So a uh, lot of things, actually. <laughs> There's a, an entire field of finding spammers and scammers on the internet. Many of the answers that I had were related to time. And I think time is always um, not so much used tool in our data ops arsenal. So what I say, what I'm saying is that maybe a good thing of Apache Beam and a good feature that we could think of is aggregations. What it means is, imagine that we have our website and uh, we have some users that are navigating on our website, right? All these users are actually leaving some traces or their journey on our website. So this can be like a kind of a Markov chain model. I don't know, they spend X time on this page and then they go here and there, right? Uh, what we could do is actually to think to subdivide these events into sub-windows, 60 seconds, 100 seconds, days, little sub-windows, and from here extract aggregated information, so average of this information, right? So this aggregation could be the time of connection, the username, for example, I don't know, pattern and username they used, uh, login, success or fail. So the good thing of aggregation is that they could immediately give you a level of granularity to find scammers, 
uh, from different uh, standard users. And how do we do this in Apache Beam? Well, that's not so complicated. I'm sorry, it's written not so uh, big, but as you can see at the bottom, there's beam.window, the fixed window. We can easily implement a window of methodology in Apache Beam <coughs> to interrogate our data and extract a single subset of data. Um, actually, nothing prevents us from creating more complicated pipelines and have multiple windows. We could have at the same time a short window that detects some anomalies or sums that are particularly related to some events we know are quite sensible. Or a medium term window that is sliding across this little short term one. And a long term, it can be even like Airbnb was using something like 180 days window long to understand the uh, best offer or anyway, a good level of aggregation. And this could be used to compute anomalies or compute specific moving averages. So what happens here is that we're having a sort of window pattern that does the following. So every time our, these windows are working, they create this sort of pattern. And what allows us to do is to use different time scales to understanding long range correlations or different trends and different correlations in our data. So this is something we have applied in uh, one of the companies I work for. And the good thing is that we had immediately, as in real time, multiple level of granularity because the short windows it gives us immediate information about what the user is doing. But the long term window is able to tell me, wait, Stefano, it might, this might look a scammer, but it's actually uh, your mother find out this website and now she's navigating and say, ah, you know what, mother who told you about NordVPN. So, um, and as you can see, um, this easy way of creating feature, this easy way of aggregating feature uh, led uh, my team um, at that point to create a feature store as well. So what we were doing, this could be another great usage for you, as we had a streaming of events on our website and what we were doing is, was to process in real time with Apache Beam, extract aggregation, extract real, uh, real current features for any user and it was easy then to immediately give them to a um, low latency table like big table for real time inference. So we were doing real time inference with the latest fresh data or also send them to a standard table for training purposes or even to other customers and people that were using those data. So as you can see, uh, we have a good startup. We can find scammers. <laughs> Apache Bing gave us a good idea on how to create a feature store in a nutshell without going to Tecton or uh, Spark or spending more and more money. Now, here we are. LLMs, we're all waiting for it. Mm. So, just a second, let me change my hand. Um, uh, LLMs and model deployment, actually this is more about model deployment. On Apache Bing, we can easily deploy models to production. In particular, uh, I took a first example for LLM deployment. So uh, it seems pretty new, this feature, but uh, Apache Bing goes well together with Hugging Face. And what I mean is that you can deploy any model on Hugging Face by simply calling a model handler. Model handler, is what, it's what in between your model and Apache Beam. And as you can see, it's not so complicated to be used, right? You just import your model from Transformers. You set up some options, device here, CPU, but it could be CUDA. We could do even more refined things, but just for the moment, it's Saturday again, so no complications, please. And you can immediately use it. Um, you can use it on Dataflow without even spending too much money. Um, also, you might say, ah, oh, Stefan, that was uh, something already pre-baked by Beam. Uh, what if I have my own custom model? All right, no problems, we can do it. Uh, Anyone know this GGML repository? Yes, uh, great. GGML, so, so pick up this book, read it, and the translation is that repository. The guy who made up this repo, outstanding genius, Bulgarian genius, uh, Gregory Jorganov, um, is a fully optimized tensor library with all the optimization in C++ that you can think of and has a lot of choice about quantized models. So I say, can I pick up one of those models, compile it, have the binary form of this model, and use it on Apache Beam? And the answer is, 
Yes, you can, of course. Uh, you just need to create a model handler. So here, a very sorry for the format, but just to show you how a model handler works, there are just specific functions that you have to define so that Beam recognizes them. Um, the important bit here was to create a wrapper on my model, Whisper model wrapper, which calls the model that I uh, was using, which was Whisper, uh, the way how it should start. And then Apache Beam say, bravo, Stefan, well done. I couldn't believe you were doing so great. Yes, of course. Now, now, an important thing before jumping to the next slide is, uh, great, we talk about startups and ideas for startups, right? And I think this word is not going well, right? Every day we read the newspaper. Uh, it's not news, like people dying, children dying as well. So without going into politics, the world needs just one thing, happiness, right? And so I thought, could I do, could I create a startup that just gave happiness as a present? Yes, of course, we can do it, and we can do it in BIM. So we need happiness. So a few years ago, I ended up scraping some Instagram accounts from politicians, and there was also an interview here. Um, and I said, oh, could I give this caption that I scraped from this politician plus another one that you have to guess who? Uh, to a GPT model, I deploy it through Hugging Face and BIM and Dataflow. And yes, I can do it. And the results are also pretty, oh, sorry, are pretty good because, gosh, it looks like exactly as the guy who you could think of saying these sentences. And no more, I will not say, because maybe you voted for him, so respect you anyway. But as you can see, pretty easy, and I could share happiness with the world, so everyone would be happy. And, uh, but for international people, of course, we can't talk only in Italian. So on the international side, my idea for a startup was to create a fake news startup and have a fake news website. Say, same thing. So I just gave a prompt to GPT and tell him to complete it. GPT through this model handler, GPT through Apache Beam, and Dataflow. And the results are pretty good, especially the last one, which is very, very encouraging. Eating back on every day is very good. No worries, you can go on with your life. And um, Scottish people would be very, very happy about this. <laughs> Actually, they were. I, so I'll we'll jump up to the conclusions of this talk. So you managed, you survived, you've seen. Uh, I can't see anyone faint off. Um, and so, yeah, what can I say? Um, so all this talk was just a way to sparkle some ideas on how to do things sneakily, maybe, how to do in a clever and quicker way. And so what we could do is just to say, Apache Beam might be looking so promising because they gave us a unified programming language. We can even see how to create features and feature stores in real time and for all the usage that we have in our mind. And the most important thing is the rapid prototyping. So model deployment is not such a painful thing. It can be easily done. Um, please, just uh, consider Apache Beam and consider your idea as a possible prototypization for this. Thanks very much for your attention. We made it. Thanks, Stefano. Questions? First one from a former MLOps engineer. Lots of questions, you know. Ask me everything <laughs> you want. <laughs> Two questions Two. if you want. Aye, all right. First, all right. difference between Airflow, in your opinion. Difference between? Between Airflow. Okay. And the second one, multi-node versus single node deployment. Oh, all right, okay. Uh, so Airflow, I think it's just um, experience, like what experience so far from Airflow. Uh, it looks too light certain times to deal with a lot of lot of ETL processes at the same time. So you need a good engineer to scale up your cluster very well. Uh, many times there were cluster failures and you have to recover back. And the airflow, you know, when it fails, it doesn't give you a lot of uh, tricks and or just hints to understand what's going on, right? So uh, that's why I would choose Apache Beam as more, just more stable. I'm not saying that Apache Beam is easier than Airflow. Airflow is a wonderful tool uh, you can start immediately. I think also if you want to develop an Airflow DAG, uh, it's not so easy to deploy to develop locally, actually, if you want to test it. You should have a, maybe an image of your cluster mm -hmm. or something like that, or a cluster just to do dev. 
Uh, the second question was, sorry, I forgot. Single node versus multi node ah, yeah. for Apache Beam. Yes. Uh, so, <coughs> say more. Single node versus a multi node, what do you mean? Like, if I want to spin up a job and I want to have a multiple node, or? Like, for example, if I want to have, I don't know, uh, the model MLOps part uh, with the model and I have to, I don't know, deploy my model. Uh, mm -hmm. It's working also on a single node. Do you suggest to work on a single node All or right. it's better so in working? So, of course, it depends on the model you're dealing with course, because yes. on a single node, the scalability is a bit uh, less than compared to multiple nodes, right? Uh, but like here, that's a very good statement. For the 90% of the companies that we know, logistic <laughs> regression random forests are more than enough to run on a single node. So single node is possible. And also, it uh, doesn't cost so much as multi-nodes. Likewise, I'll say multi nodes and data flow, sometimes if you're careful enough, it shouldn't cost so much money. There are some excellent data flow features like data flow prime that allows you to lower the cost of your uh, of your actual your, your process. Okay. Okay. And lots of questions. Oh, well, later on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Other questions? I have one. Uh, you have shown how to define a pipeline. What about testing it? What are good practices? Oh, uh, like many <laughs> testing production test, is not test, an answer. <laughs> test what? Py test? Py, py test, for example, a like simple test on the Python can be done. I, then now, if I remember correctly, it can be done. There's like, you could even use PyTest to do simple tests on your pipeline and see what's the output that can be done. Other possible option is that you could use your dev environment or test environment to just spin up a pipeline and see how it behaves. Um, one thing that you're hitting is uh, debugging. Like, I think that when you have an error in Apache Beam, and okay, it's not so clear what the error is saying, but this is a conjunction of not effort between Apache Beam and Google as well. Because please, if you're using the GCP, please send a request to Google. Is there anyone from Google? Ah, damn, we need them. Mm. To have a more clear logging yeah, the of what's with going the on. the yellow shirt there is Ah, from yes, Google. I remember, I will ask him. Uh, more logging, more information. You can't say, oh, your code failed. Hey, thank God, I know. What's wrong, I will never know. So it depends on what you exactly want to do, how complicated is your task. Thanks, other questions? Andrea, you have space for one more if you want. No worries, go. Don't Bye. be shy. Um, how easy is to uh, add like my super custom code in C++ model? Um, because you saw, no, you, you show us the um, yeah. uh, hugging face uh, pipeline. Yeah. But for example, I have my crazy model in C++ and I want to deploy and having, I don't know, uh, HTTP interface on top of that or other stuff that you, for example, can do with other tools. Yeah, you're right. Um, well, it's not so complicated. Uh, at the end of the day, um, what you need is first a way to interact with your C++ code. So I think you must have some Python wrapper or Python interface to deal with. This can be Cython or uh, mm. whatever. You can create a package and an image in between that uh, precompiles everything. Um, Indeed, um, one way to deploy on data flow is to use what they call flex template. Mm -hmm. So what happens under the hood is that you're baking up this Docker image of your pipeline with all your dependencies, custom dependencies. You pushed it on the artifact registry. And then there's a special command like gcloud data flow build a flex template. They say, oh, 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 we need to use this image. And it's very good because automatically uh, share all your custom code to all the workers that you want, uh, present in real time, uh, no lagging, no issues, no issues. Logging still the problem though. If it doesn't work immediately, so <laughs> there's a logging problem, right? But that's uh, part of the journey. Can I say last one? Yes. <laughs> there, are, yeah. there are other questions? No, it's fine. That's all right. Uh, defining a custom operator, uh, how Define a custom operator. No, how easy it is. Uh, it's complicated. It's painful. Like for example, I don't know if there is something that I want to create in my pipeline that is not supported by the official library. Um, no, no, no. Uh, it's actually what uh, 
Uh, sorry, Rex, I should have given a more thorough example here. Um, uh, but what you need is to define uh, this one. Uh, can I can I step here, or is there like some? Ah, you should have told me before. Um, like here, you see, there's a function which is called do function. What's actually that object is a Python class, a Python class that inherits the beam uh, do fn, and under the hoods, there's uh, you specify a function called uh, process. And in that function, you create whatever you want, and you can process. Uh, the all important caveat: input must be element. Element is the output from your previous step. Okay. That goes input is the pick collection basically. Um, and you can go with the flow, easily. Okay. Startup idea. Yes. <laughs> So if there are no more questions from Andrea, at least, <laughs> then thank again, uh, Stefan. Thank you. So now we can move uh, seams outside, or if they are done also inside the lounge. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>